We've got a segment up for you here that I'm excited. You'll notice that there is sort of a little bit of a lean towards the for-profit sector at SOCAP, but the nonprofit sector is just as critical within the social capital markets, and we see a lot of organizations doing hybrid models as well. And so sometimes understanding how all of this works together, again, it helps to, to hear a case study, understand where for-profits, nonprofits, everyone comes together to make this whole marketplace work. So I'm excited to welcome to the stage for a story that I think weaves in and out of both of those worlds, and you'll really enjoy uh, Todd Johnson from Jones Day and Bill Strathman from Network for Good. So first of all, I just want to thank uh, Rosalie and Kevin. This is the second time I've been on the plenary stage at SOCAP over the years, and I'm really grateful for this particular time slot right <laughs> after lunch on Friday. It's the best, because <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so I'm really... I'm really uh, only here as a prop uh, because Bill Strathman is main event. Uh, Bill is the CEO of Network for Good, and Bill, what the heck is Network for Good? It could just be about anything. That's true. Yeah, the name is a little vague, but uh, it sounds great. It's better than the Network for Evil, so that's why we <laughs> went with it. Um, so uh, we are uh, a lot like PayPal for charity, uh, simply put. It's a little more complicated than that, but basically we provide a donation page and uh, fundraising uh, software. Uh, and payments platform to uh, nonprofits, thousands of nonprofits. Uh, so if a small nonprofit has a uh, website and they want to receive donations, PayPal's not exactly built for that. Ours is, and it's very easy to use. Um, we also provide free training on how to raise money online, and we do that for about 100,000 nonprofits. So, so it's, yeah. You're a brand new startup? You just started last week? Or? <laughs> so, uh, um, so that's the idea, right? Uh, uh, fundraising for uh, nonprofits, uh, both the uh, know how and then the software. But uh, uh, no, I actually, I'm not the founder either. Uh, it's, uh, the founder is a guy named Steve Case. Uh, you guys might have heard of him. And uh, he, uh, he, back in uh, the wake of 9 11, created a nonprofit AOL, Yahoo, Cisco, all three came together. Uh, with a $10 million grant, seed grant, for Net for Good. And the idea was, you know, simply then to make it as easy to donate online as it is to shop online. And so they started it with a $10 million grant. Um, they, uh, about two years later, I came in uh, as kind of a turnaround guy because they had spent that money. Now, wait a second. You, you were a consultant. Why would you go to work for a nonprofit? Um, that's a good question. So I was... Uh, I was actually, before I was a consultant, I was actually a social entrepreneur. Before it was like a name or even cool. Uh, it, was, it was actually kind of lonely to be a social entrepreneur back then. And I didn't know that's what I was. Um, so I was, you know, a tree-hugging philosophy major who went to get his MBA to change the world, as one does. And, uh, and so uh, um, that uh, was kind of my, I don't know, you know, what about me made me want to do that uh, from the start. But... Uh, you know, my heroes were Anita Roddick and Ben and Jerry's uh, back in the day. Um, but I sold out. I sold out and I took uh, the fat paycheck from Anderson and became a management consultant. Um, but on my fourth day with Anderson, uh, I lost my mom to cancer and she was 54. Uh, and then we lost my uh, wife's mom to cancer when she was 57. And so that was a a kick in the ass, a wake-up call for the you know guy who who was you know a social entrepreneur, uh, and so I changed my trajectory and I uh, traded you know financial success for life significance, as they say. So instead of working for the Death Star, you started working for the network. Exactly, for good. exactly. So um, I did. So tell me, tell me a little bit. You know, and that was 12 years ago. 12 years ago. All right. So 12 years ago, you go to work for this nonprofit. Um, What's happened over the last 12 years? What's, tell me a little bit about the story of Network for Good. Um, is, it, is it a nonprofit today? It is not. It is not. So we are B Corp certified for profit, uh, or I like to say for purpose company. But uh, um, I've always thought that we should, you know, change the name for those companies who are not in our kind of space. You know, we call them not for profits. Why don't we call them not for purpose uh, organizations? And the, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, uh, but anyway. Uh, so we were, it was a nonprofit when I joined, and so the task at hand was turn it around, raise money. So I raised, over the course of about six years, another $10 million. So $10 million grant to start, 
10 million dollars uh, in funding uh, and importantly along the way it, it didn't have a business model when I joined so we built a business model uh, and we got the point in 2011 where we were self-sufficient on earned revenue alone as a nonprofit and so we're kind of this cool technology company so we're charging you know seventy dollars a month to nonprofit for the donation page it's software as a service is uh, uh, what we are and uh, and then a transaction fee three percent because we have to pay credit cards so we have a little margin anyway we built up this business model where we were break even and uh, um, and a nonprofit, and uh, it got harder and harder to uh, to raise money at that point. So, in, in part because you we're saw victims of our success. I mean, uh, you know, so 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 well, so so we what, what we you know what we did is we switched to becoming a uh, a for profit, and it uh, you know the reason was that we are now a nonprofit with this great service, right, for for uh, other nonprofits, um, and we're. Uh, break even, but we're not making enough money to really reinvest. And you know, we were about the mission. We wanted to unleash generosity on ma on a massive scale. And so I said to my board, "Listen, if we're going to go big, then we need to raise more capital. And I'm not going to be able to do it because now, you know, I'm competing for uh, don donations from organizations that, frankly, need it more because I've got earned revenue. And so we uh, spun it out and created a for-profit B Corp. And uh, because I needed capital." It was harder to attract talent as a dot org, and the governance was somewhat uh, less nimble as a nonprofit than a privately held company. And I think you were also starting to face some competition from yep. better funded for profits. Yep, exactly. So, so how did you do this? How did you go from being a nonprofit to a for profit? That had to have been really simple. <laughs> so, you know, full disclosure: Todd is was our is our legal counsel, was our legal counsel. So this is kind of like Obi Wan Kenobi in interviewing. I'll take Luke Skywalker, you know, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so, you know, um, I, I, they, what we did was, it was a balance, right? So we actually uh, looked at some uh, impact investors, right, uh, to do it. And the idea was, how do we, obviously, not lose our mission? So how do we ensure that we have mission insurance or mission lock, as you guys have, you know, heard us talking about in this, uh, this conference this week, and then also, uh, how do we not scare away the money? Because it, the impact investing at that stage, you know, we, we're kind of impact investing with a lowercase i, right? Because we're helping the helpers. Um, and so um, we weren't, didn't fit the profile for the very, very, very small, relatively speaking, pool of capital for impact money. Yep. And so I figured, all right, we need to be attractive to that much larger pool, and maybe one partner at this, you know, traditional private equity firm will see what we're doing and uh, get interest. And that kind of rounding error in terms of the, you know, maybe the 1% of all that money is, a big, is bigger, and was at the time, than all the impact money. Mm -hmm. So the task was, how do you not scare away the money, right. but not sell your soul and lose the mission? Right. Well, um, how did you do that? Well, and, and then both in the short and long term. So the way we did that, I, I've got uh, you know six Bs that six Bs that we used. Okay, uh, just to keep it uh, easy. One, uh, the uh, buyout. So uh, what we did is we created. You know, what 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 does an investor invest in a company for to have an exit? So how do we protect from them sell, to keep with the Star Wars theme? How do we <laughs> protect from them selling to Darth Vader? Right, the private equity. And uh, so we put in this Zuckerberg-like stock called Founders Preferred Stock that couldn't get diluted, couldn't get voted out, right? And that Founders stock contains a veto on exit. If they go counter to mission or want to sell, uh, if the private equity investor wants to sell the company to Darth Vader. And just, just to be clear, who owns that? that the nonprofit. So that's the cool thing. We're not that novel in being a social, you know, a B Corp certified company, uh, but... We are pretty novel in that we have a nonprofit owner and a pri traditional private equity firm owner and then employee options. Because what we did is we kept the nonprofit intact. That was very important because that gives you somewhere to put the charitable assets at the end of the day, right? Um, so if we ultimately do have an exit, then, and the nonprofit owns, let's say, 50% of the company at that point, all those assets go back into the charitable sector and they can be distributed as the nonprofit sees fit, okay? 
And so we have the nonprofit owner and then the uh, private equity owner. And that, those are the two masters that we're trying to solve in terms of walking this tightrope. So the nonprofit has a veto on the buyout. What, 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 what are the other five Bs? So the other five Bs. So uh, bylaws. So, you know, we, with the help of Todd and Jones Day, put in, uh, there's the ad, uh, the, the, we put in um, the bylaws so that we could address a larger set of stakeholders than just the shareholders, right? Because obviously, you know, the number one thing you want to protect from is if the nonprofit puts a veto to the investors, they can say in a traditional corporation, well, that's, you're breaching your fiduciary responsibility if you don't take the highest offer, right? So if Darth has a higher offer than, I don't know who, <laughs> Obi-Wan, then they can get sued. So that was very important, and is uh, protecting, the, uh, protecting that uh, yeah, ability. In fact, I would say for the total geeks out there, what we did is we incorporated it in New York. Correct. Under the constituency statute in New York, which specifically allows directors to think beyond just maximizing wealth for shareholders. It's a stakeholder statute, and then we drew that into the articles and bylaws. Correct, because it wasn't available in Delaware at the time, now is. So, you know, now it's like 32 states that have these types right. of laws as opposed to the 17 or so when we were doing it. So, so anyway, bylaws, bylaws is the second thing, right? And, uh, and so it's just a concept of a broader set of stakeholders. And that also enables to get B Corp certification, which we now have, the good housekeeping seal that you are doing this stuff. Um, second was brand. And so we're like, I'll say, okay, that's good on the exit, but what, in the, what about along the way? How do we control the company from, you know, uh, the private equity, uh, equity firm from making the company go off mission? And so the net for good name was a big part of the value. And so instead of putting that into the company when we took it out of the nonprofit, the nonprofit licenses it to the company, right? And so now that now so that so if so if if I now I'm running the company, right? And if I with the private equity firm start to you know use our platform for gambling or whatever, they can say, okay, you can do that, but you're not doing it under the network good name, and they can pull the license back, right? And then the investor gets nervous. They go, well, what about if we want to have an exit? You know, the network good name is everything. Like, okay, it'll transfer on exit, right? It'll transfer on exit with the, with the acquisition. So the third one was the brand. Um, the other way along the way in the immediate term is, well, how do I stay close? And we basically took two board members from the nonprofit board who stayed intact. The nonprofit board stayed intact. It's like 12 board members. We took two. We put them on the board of the company. And so now the board of the company is me, the two board members from the nonprofit, and then two representing the investors. And so Bill's the swing boat. And those board members are anchored in by uh, that class, special class of stock. Correct. You can't. Owns. Right, exactly. Um, the, uh, uh, so board, uh, bylaws, buyout, brand. Yeah, I couldn't think of a B for people, so I used Bill. Uh, and Bob, who is my CFO, and I'm not, he actually really is named Bob. Uh, and so Bill and Bob, uh, this is actually one of the most important pieces as far as I'm concerned. They actually dress up as Ted and Bill. The excellent adventure thing, never mind. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly, Bill and Ted's. So, um, uh, so, you know, I didn't change overnight when we, you know, I, I'm the same guy that took the job for the nonprofit with no hopes or dreams of ever having it be a for-profit, to be, to be honest. Um, uh, and so, um, and then we left Bob the, as the CFO of the .org. Um, and so now we, he and I have been working together for seven years, and so you, there's a relationship there. I have a relationship with the board, so the people was a huge piece for me. I mean, I was really nervous that they were going to put some, you know, do some national search and put somebody else in front of the dot org and all kind. And I've seen that that movie before, and it can go awry. And so that was that was a really big piece for me. And the last one, uh, I can't believe we're actually going to get this done in time. Uh, the, the last one is uh, uh, the business. So. The .org, we pretty much took all the operations, right? It went from being an owner-operator to an owner, but it still played a role in our business. Right. It still receives donations and then re-grants them to the charities, the charitable arm. And so we set the 6B is business. We set up a business relationship with the .org, right, that provided it sufficient funding to maintain operations because as an owner, there's no liquidity that comes out. There's no dividend or anything. Right. And so we set up a business relationship so that we could pay them for their fair share for, what they were, for their role and our ability to create this really cool model where we can process a donation for any charity instantly. I mean, you can go to Net for Good, as you may know, and you can search for any charity you want, your kids' PTA, anything, and make a donation to them like that. So, so it's a pretty cool service. Two, two quick ending questions. Yes. How long did this take you to get done? 
Uh, it took us, uh, let's see, two, I, I first pitched the board on the vision in 2011. We started to see whether investors would invest in 2012, and then we spun it out in 2013. So almost two years. Two years, yeah. And uh, how much did it cost to get it done? How much did it cost to get it done? Uh, I'm hitting you with a, sorry, you didn't, you weren't ready for those questions. No, 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 I, no, it's fine. I mean, I, it's, it was uh, probably, all, I mean, we had some, I, I just, I, I was a little, um, you know, you provided the services. Uh, pro bono. Pro bono. Yeah, so okay. I didn't know that. No, was, no, no, no. It's okay, because now everybody's going to come running up, you know, no. uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, probably about uh, 250. Okay. Right. Fifty grand, and and uh, um, okay, and just backing out ten thousand feet, you know. Yeah. Final thoughts, because we've been down. Final in the thoughts, weeds yeah. Here. So this is kind of like pretty technical in the weeds for this last day, and so you know, final thoughts are kind of. I have two. I'm super passionate about money for good. I mean, net for good is about that three hundred billion in the U.S. right now, right? And trying to make that friction free for nonprofits. And, uh, uh, and, and how we're doing it is about all this stuff that we're talking about here, SOCAP, right? Businesses that are doing good and have a mission, um, I mean, and, and make money. Um, and so uh, uh, on those two fronts, number one, I'll just make a, you know, a, a plea for, to the social entrepreneurs in the room is that if you can find a uh, market-based solution for attacking the social problem that you're going after, and I know this doesn't, you know, isn't, is, is, is uh, maybe a little obvious to this crew, do it. And I feel like we have a moral imperative to do it because you got to leave the charitable dollars for those problems that do not have a market-based solution. So that, and then for all of us as individuals who are going home to our friends and family this weekend, there's a little bit of an echo chamber, chamber here coming here. I know it is in my neighborhood. I mean, you know, most of my neighbors can't spell impact investing, right? And so I, I beseech you, and I'm going to do a little gag here so that you remember. I beseech you to try and stop everybody that we know from doing this, right? And, they, and what they're doing is they're going, this is my investment money, right? I'm going to make money with this, and I'm going to give this away, Right? And the fact that they treat it in two different pockets, we've got to break that binary and just think as one. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Thanks.